Hello Booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. It feels like I haven't filmed in a year because it's been way too long. This is the first week of the unfortunate read-along that's going to last the entire month and I'm very excited. The video challenge for this week is to do the unfortunate read-along book tag. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So there's only seven questions to this book tag so it should be pretty quick and yeah. We'll see how it goes. I'm actually challenging myself to talk about books in this book tag that I don't usually talk about because there are a lot of books that I could mention again because I've mentioned them a million times because they're good books. But I'm going to try to avoid my usuals and do something that I haven't talked about a lot on here. Why you always lying? Oh my god. Number one on the book tag is Violet Baudelaire, and this is a book that brought something new. Whether it be a character, a plot device, situation, something that I haven't really seen before in a book. And for this one, I'm going to say Superheroes Anonymous by Lexi Dunn. This book is, I've talked about it before, but not like super in-depth, I guess. This book is about a girl who gets called Hostage Girl after a while because she just keeps getting kidnapped by villains in her little you know, city area. She just keeps getting kidnapped and all the villains kidnap her because she's like a staple in the villain community. Um, but then she develops powers of her own, has to dive into the other side of vigilantism. Vigilanting? Vig vigilance? Whatever. It's just cool because I've never seen that done, flipped around that way before. And it was pretty great, so. I think it's a trilogy because I've only seen three books to it and I have all three of them. I haven't read the third one yet. So, but, yep. Question number two is Sunny Baudelaire, and everyone knows she has a bite that leaves a mark, so name a book that left a lasting mark. And this one is going to be The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. The reason I'm picking this book is because mo the majority of the book takes place in a graveyard, as the title kind of says there. I used to be really kind of afraid of graveyards and kind of creeped out by graveyards and they were kind of dark and creepy places that I wanted to avoid. But then after reading this book, they kind of seemed less creepy and more sort of just a place that's kind of peaceful, kind of whimsical, things like that. So that's why it left a lasting, lasting, lasting? That's why it left a lasting impression on me. My friends keep making fun of me because I say I want to go work in a graveyard now and I haven't quite found the job. So if you know one, no graveyard this hiring. Number three is Klaus Baudelaire, whose name I am suddenly feeling like I'm not pronouncing correctly. And it's name a book that you cannot stop reading because everyone knows that Klaus is all of us. And we are all Klaus. And for this one, I'm going to say City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. It's a middle grade kind of paranormal book. And she basically dies and is pulled back over to this side by her ghost friend and her parents are also ghost hunters and she finds that she can see the other side and all the ghosts and she calls it the veil and she can communicate with ghosts and in this book they go to Edinburgh which um, is supposed to be the super haunted place and there are ghosts everywhere and she deals with all these adventures and apparently there's more than one of these books gonna happen. That's not the right way to say that. And apparently there's going to be a sequel to this because Victoria Schwab keeps talking about writing it. That's exciting because this one was great and I couldn't stop reading it. And of course it's a middle grade so it's a quick read anyway and I love me some spooky middle grades. So. Next is Count Olaf, a character that you just love to hate. And this could be like an unlikable protagonist or it could be a villain that you just can't help but like. And for this one I am going to say Minya from um, Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor. Minya in this book has sort of an ability to sort of latch on to spirits as someone dies um, and kind of make them into her will. A little, and it's it's very dark. This book is a lot darker than I expected and I really like it because I like dark books. But yeah, so she can kind of um, control spirits of people who have passed away and give them as much will as she wants. She can kind of control how long their leash is. And she's kind of terrible <laughs> like to everybody in the book. But also, when you kind of understand like what she's been through and stuff, she you can empathize. You may not agree with what she's doing, but you can understand sort of where she's coming from. And that's one thing I really love about this book is all of the villains, you, you sort of see their side. There's not, it's kind of hard to tell where the villain is because literally every person in the book, you kind of understand where they're coming from. And it's, it's interesting. I actually really liked this book. It took me a it took me a week, but it was good. Next is Uncle Monty, and it is a character death that you just can't get over. Um, and for this one, I'm going to talk about Lost Boy by Christina Henry. And I am going to say this is obviously a spoiler alert because it's a spoiler question, so I'll put a little spoiler alert 
thing in the corner if you want to mute your screen and then it'll go away when I'm done talking about it. But Lost Boy hurt me because most of the boys in the Lost Boys die in this book. And it was just very painful because they're all very innocent and and just playful and trying to live their best life. And then Peter sucks. He just sucks. And there's just a lot of violence and stuff. And so a lot of the boys die. It's a great book. And it stressed me out a lot. But it's a really great book. And um, it's basically a retelling of Peter Pan, which every retelling of Peter Pan seems the same to me. Peter's bad. Captain Hook is good and justified and blah, blah, blah. This one's no different. But I really enjoy Christina Henry's writing style. So um, you should definitely check it out. Next is Aunt Josephine. I say aunt, not aunt. Is aunt... Like how you're supposed to say that word? I don't, I don't care. Aunt Josephine, and this is Weird But You Love It. And for this one, I'm going to say The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Gilman. Um, this is a really, really small book. It's only a little over 20 pages. Um, it's an old book about sort of a woman that is dealing with mental illness. And it's described in sort of a horror way. Um, it's got a lot of kind of gothic vibes about it. And it throughout the you know entire 23 pages she's obsessed with this yellow wallpaper in this room where she is and it just it becomes more and more creepy as it goes on and more sort of distorted as she goes on um but it's very weird but I very very much like it it's of course it's short so it's fast anyway but and the last one is Justice Strauss and this is a book that had the best intentions but didn't follow through or a character that had the best intentions and didn't follow through so someone something that had great potential but just didn't live up to it for you and I'm gonna say Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard um, I don't really like this series so much I enjoyed the first one and I wanted to read the second one but then after the second one I kind of don't want to continue the series I may at some point but I just don't see myself doing it right now my favorite character in this was the Queen and if you read the second one you know why that just doesn't work for me so some things changed in this one let's just say that much and also the writing style sort of changed and it got more info dumpy where it just kind of um like constantly they're going back to saying you know and she looked over to the thing in the middle of an action scene she looks over at some kind of mirror and remembers something from like a million years ago and has like a reminiscence moment and you're like how is she not dead yet if she's zoning out every five seconds to remember i'm not a big fan of the writing style of this one and oh and the um main character just gets more and more unlikable and i don't mind an unlikable character i don't like one that's unlikable and then just keeps on doing the things that make her unlikable like she notices that she's doing these things and it's like, oh no, I'm this way and I'm forgetful and I'm a horrible person. And then she keeps doing them. I just... Not a fan. Just not a fan. But that's all for my unfortunate read-along book tag. I hope to see you in my next unfortunate read-along video next week. Um, but before I sign off of this video, it is time for a booktuber spotlight. And the booktuber, or should I say booktubers, that I'm going to spotlight today are Lori and Thomas. Lori was doing her booktube channel alone, but her husband would kind of be in videos a lot. And so they decided to just sort of make it a, I guess, a double, like, thing. A, you know, a collaborative effort. I can't say words right now. They sort of decided to make it a collaborative effort. And I think that that's just really cool because I love my husband and I love reading and doing book things with him. So I just think it's fun to watch them kind of film together and vibe off of each other as they're talking. So I really wanted to give them a shout out. Plus, Lori is really, really sweet. She talks to me on Twitter. She always is uplifting to everybody on Twitter and it's great. So check her out. But that's all I have for this video. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight